Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Before a district attorney can begin his search for a murderer, there are three things he must know. When and where the murder was committed, and the identity of the victim. All three of these elements were unknown when this case began. It started with a midnight call from Harrington, asking me to meet him at the railroad freight yards on the outskirts of the city. It's the third box car on that siding over there, Chief. We just passed this weekend. Hmm. Your detective and a brakeman were going through the cars looking for hobos when they spotted a duffel bag in the empty. First, they thought it was something some bow had left behind. Then when they went to lift it, they realized there was a body in it. Any identification, Harrington? No. Female, Caucasian. Coroner said she was about 21 years old. Any clothing? Yeah, but no laundry marks. Lab boy said everything must have been home laundered. Trying to rest him at the time of death? Mm-hmm. About uh, seven hours ago, between 5 and 6 p.m., Ah, here we are. Can we get a little light in here? Oh, sure, sure. Hey, Charlie, turn on those spots. Mr. Garrett wants some light in here. Thanks, Charlie. That's good. Hey, I'll give you a boost up, Chief. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, give me a hand now. No, yeah, it's all right. I can make it. Well, there she is. Pretty brutal job of stabbing. Mm. That duffel bag there. Yeah. Duffel bag itself won't help much. The kind anybody could pick up in a war settler store. Uh-huh. Look at this, though. The bottom of the bag. Oh, yes. I noticed that. Damp from blood seepage. It's more than blood. Well, a cart of this bag around with the body in it must have set it down someplace to rest. A little earth clung to it. Rub some of it off between your fingers. Yep. Yeah, fine grain. Gritty. Feel like beach sand? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Hey. What? Just thinking of the train schedule. The body couldn't have been put on until after the murder. Say after six o'clock. Train made three stops between then and the time it pulled into the yards. Any of those stops on the coast? Only one. A watering stop near Lobster Bay. Fishing village and a resort center. Lots of people pouring in and out of there this time of the year. Ah, if we only knew who she was. If only there was a laundry mark. Well, there's one thing we've got. Ah, uh, what? Her shoes. Uh, cheap make. Could have come from a thousand stores all over the country. Yes, but these were repaired recently. If we could find the shoemaker who fixed them, he might recognize his work. We'll take these with us. Leave the rest for the lab. What's our first move? <laughs> the Lobster Bay. And the lab boys prepare a photo of her. Maybe we can get on identification. That's that, Chief. Want to try that seashell woman the last guy told us about? You know, the one who goes around peddling those handmade necklaces? Oh, I think we'd better. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, Looks like we're running in luck for a change. 
Look, across the street there. <laughs> Table by the window, that seafood place. <laughs> yeah, that's her, all right. She looks like Father Neptune's mother. <laughs> she sure does. Let's go. Hello. Mind if we sit here? You want to buy a necklace? Your loved one will hear the whispering of the sea, the secrets of life, for one dollar. I'm afraid we're more interested in the secrets of death, the girl's death. Show the photograph, Harrington. Yeah, right. You ever see this girl before? Well, did you? It's important. She's been murdered. Oh, she should have bought a necklace. The sea would have warned her. Then you have seen her? Yes, once. Where? At the bus station. With a man. Do you know who the man was? No. What took you so long to make up your mind? Did you know him or didn't you? No. Can you describe him for us? Neither light nor dark. Neither tall nor short. Part of the sea of humanity. Like any other part. Thanks. Buy a necklace. Each shell has a thousand ears. But none of them has a mouth. Come on, Hangin. I think she was lying about knowing the man, Chief. And so do I. Why? If the man she saw was the killer, and she knew him, he might pay her to forget it. If you're right... She'll try to contact the man we're looking for. I want you to follow her, Arrington. The beach. Wherever she goes, day and night. I'll do some more checking around town. You can check me at the hotel. Right. And walk up the street with me a bit. Then pick a doorway for a stakeout. Hey. What? I just saw a girl go into the realtor's office up there. Looked like Miss Miller. Well, what would she be doing in Lobster Bay unless the lab came up with that? She just came out again. It is her. Must be lab information, then. You stop here. I'll catch her. Oh, Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over for you, Mr. Garrett. The hotel said you... Where's Harrington going? Well, we've got somebody under surveillance. I'll explain later. What have you got for us? Reports from the lab. Those stitches used to sew the victim into the duffel bag. Yes. Morgan says they're the kind of stitches used by seamen to mend torn sails. Oh, most sailing vessels are pleasure craft these days. It fits in with a resort town like this. The girl is still a mystery. She wasn't a local resident. She may come from Sheffield. What makes you think so? Morgan found a bus ticket in the small pocket of her dress. It was a ticket from Lobster Bay to Sheffield. Well, that fits with the story we got about the murder of a woman being seen at the bus depot here. She might have been buying a ticket to go home. Population of Sheffield's over 100,000. Her identity might not be easy to trace. Unless you give her a photo to the Sheffield newspapers. I want to avoid that for a while if I can. I've got something else I can use in tracing her pair of shoes. You want me to go back to the city? No, you go to the hotel and wait for a call from Harrington. You'll have to be our message center. Yes, sir. Where will you be? In Sheffield, checking shoe repair shops. You want to know if I ever see these shoes before? That's right. Yes, you're the fifth place in Sheffield I've tried. Why you want to know? It's police business. Here are my credentials. Oh, you're the district attorney, eh? I vote for you, you know that? Oh, thank you very much. How about the shoes? On a memento. Hey, Angelo, turn off the machine, huh? Ah, that's better. Eh, yeah, I fixed this all right. See, here's the way I saw the broken strap. I remember for something else, too. I never get paid for the job. Who owns the shoes? Mrs. Watson. She's lived two blocks up in the street, Brown Woodhouse. Mrs. Watson, hmm? Her husband around? Mm, no, no, no. He's gone away one month. Ever hear anybody say where the husband went? Mm, who knows? He's go all the time. Sometimes to work someplace in the factories. Sometimes to, uh, to work with the fishing boats. You mean he's been a seaman? Sometimes. A little bit of everything. Say, wh- wh- why are you asking me all of these things? How come you got her the shoes? Because Mrs. Watson doesn't need them anymore. She's dead. Dead? Mamma mia. You said the house is two blocks up the street, in a brown wooden frame? Uh, see, see. Uh, Mrs. Watson's a mama, does she know? 
No, I'm afraid not. No. But you got to tell her, huh? It's part of my job. What's going to happen to the poor bambino? The old lady, she's too old to take care of a small baby all the time. Too old and too poor. Maybe not if I come home and take care, huh? I hope he can. He's on a bambino. What's going to stop him unless he's in a, uh, some kind of trouble? Is he in a trouble? That depends whether or not he sewed up the top of a certain duffel bag. Thanks for your help, Mr. Skinelli. Oh, sure, sure, sure thing. <laughs> they split up a month ago. Wasn't the first time. Then last week, her husband wrote to her from Lobster Bay. She said he was sorry. Wanted my daughter, Helen, to come and meet him. I thought she was there with him. It seems that she was, for a while. Can you give me your son-in-law's full name and description? Herbert Watson's his name. But they call him Bud. Herbert Bud Watson. How tall would you say... Somebody at the door. You want me to answer it? No, I'll, I'll call out the window and send them away. I don't, I don't want to see anybody now. What's the matter? What is it? Come on, somebody, open the door! It's him. It's my son in law, Bud. Looks like he's saving us a lot of trouble. Better open the door, ma'am, and let him in. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the body on the freight train, here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The body of a young woman, a murder victim, had been found aboard a freight train. A search for her identity led to a seaside resort and then to a town inland where facts began to indicate that her estranged husband was the killer. I was getting the husband's description from the dead woman's mother when the husband suddenly appeared at the house seeking entrance. Hey, come on! Somebody open it up! What did I do? What did he come back here for? That's something we'll find out when you let him in. I'll step behind the door. You open it. All right. Let him in. Well, it's about time. What took you so long? Wait, Helen. You know where she is. What did you do to her? What did you do to my hero? Hey, what? Are you crazy? What are you trying to do? What's the matter? Here, that's enough. Stop that. Hey, who are you? What's going on here? I'm the district attorney. Just stand back against the wall and keep your hands up where I can see them. You killed her. And now you have to go and come back here. What are you talking about? Kill who? Mom, where's Helen? Where is she? Don't you know, Watson? Or did you think she'd never be identified? Helen's been murdered? Oh, no, no. I, I don't believe you. Stop pretending. You did it. You know you did. No, Mom, I swear. Look, I gave her money. I told her to come back home and I'd meet her here today. We were going to take the baby and go to some other town, make a fresh start. How much money did you give your wife? $400. Well, that's a lot, all right. Where did you get it? Come on. Lobster Bay. How? Shaking down tourists who were fishing without a license. I pretended to be a game warden. Worked the same thing once before two years ago. Now you know. Who else knew? Rosie? The old woman who sells the shell necklaces? Yeah, she knew all right. She hadn't had, had more money. I had to pay her off. The same way you paid her off to keep her quiet after you killed your wife? I tell you, I didn't kill her. If Rosie says I did, she's a liar. She hasn't said anything yet. But we're going back to Lobster Bay. Maybe seeing you in custody will loosen her tongue a little. Start moving. All right, 
Flanagan. I'm here, Chief. Yeah, how'd you know I was down here on the pier? Miss Miller told me she'd seen you and Rosie from the hotel window just before dark, oh. walking down here toward the pier. Where is Rosie? Why, well, uh, that's her, out there on the beach with the flashlight. Seems like this is her hour for picking up shells. Oh, uh, who's that you got in the car? Bud Watson. I identified the murdered girl. He's her husband. Is he clean? I don't know. He was working a shakedown racket on the fisherman here. Rosie was cutting herself in for a payoff. I want to see what happens when I bring them together. Come on, Watson. Out of the car. This way. Well, what are we going out on the beach for? Just visiting an old friend of yours. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, you men. Now get off my beach with your shoes on. You crush the shell. All uh, right, take it easy, Rosie. Why do you follow me? All day you've been following me. That's your flashlight, Harrington. Right. I want you to look at this man, Rosie. You ever seen him before? Didn't know she's seen me before. He didn't ask you. Well, how about it, Rosie? Yes. All right. Now, tell us. Is he the same man you saw at the bus depot with the girl whose photograph I showed you? Yes. Same man. At the bus depot? But she's lying. I was never with Helen at the bus depot. You hear that, Rosie? That means one of you is lying. Well, I'm not lying. No, you old hag. What are you trying to do? Oh, you don't get to take it easy. Do you own a knife, Watson? Yeah, but I never used it. I didn't ask you that. Where is it? With my things, where I've been staying. The shack I ran about a quarter of a mile up the beach past the end of Boardwalk. I'll show you. We'll find it. You've been walking around loose long enough. We'll have a look at your place after we get you behind bars in the local jail. Let go of you, mister, so make it easy on yourself. All right. Start walking. Chief. Yeah, the footlocker here. Hinges are rusted from the salt air. Help me open it. Yeah. You know something? I can't figure why Watson won't admit it if he was at the bus station with his wife. That wouldn't hurt him. No, it wouldn't. That's why I think he's telling the truth. And Rosie must be covering up for something. Chris, the top of the locker's coming. Uh, just a bunch of junk. Well, that old fish knife is the only one in the place. And that's not the weapon. It's so rusted it's ready to fall apart. Yeah. Well, that Rosie is such a screwball. I should have stayed with her. It's too late for that now. If she's collecting anything, she... Mr. Garrett. That's Miss Miller, Chief. Oh, Mr. Garrett. Miss Miller, what's wrong? It's Rosie, the necklace woman. There's a crowd down the beach with torches. What's happened to her? She's been murdered. They... They said that somebody cut her throat. All right. Let's get out there, Harrington. Hey. Hey, Chief, can't we... Can't we slow down for a little? You gotta keep going. Well, the people who found the body saw a man running up the beach this way. Well, he... He had at least a... A ten-minute start, though. Hey. Hey. What's that? Up ahead. Looks like an abandoned fisherman shack. Yeah. The man we're after might might be in there. You better get ready to take him. Got your gun ready? Yeah. Yeah. Now, stand aside while I kick the door open there. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody here. Is that a lamp hanging there? Yeah. Yeah, I'll light it. Yeah, pretty clean place for a shack like this. Yes, it's too clean. Floor's been scrubbed recently, scrubbed hard. You mean in case there might have been any blood around? Mrs. Watson might have been killed in a place like this. And there are two other things. What? Whoever was living here was mighty handy with a knife. 
Look at the inside of the door. Circle drawn on the wood. The wood is full of deep gouges where somebody practiced throwing a knife. Yeah. Good aim, too. All the marks inside the circle. Yeah, take a look at that cord. The one that's suspending the lamp you lit. Hey, that's a seaman's knot. Yes, and the cord itself is just about big enough to be the draw cord from a duffel bag. The seaman we've been looking for was here, all right. And it couldn't have been Watson, Chief. Rosie was alive when we jailed him. You think it might have been an old shipmate of his? Let's go ask him if he remembers one who was handy with a knife. Shipmates of mine. Dozens of them I introduced her to at one time or another. The one we won had a habit of throwing a knife. Drew targets on a door, never missed. Matt! Matt Corbett! It was Matt Corbett! How do you know? Any reason for him being around here? Yeah! He was my partner in a shakedown racket two years ago. Neither of us come back last year because he was in some kind of trouble with the law, but. Well, this year I wrote to him and asked him to meet me here again, but he never even answered my letter. He used to be my best friend. Oh, that's... Never mind that now. Where would he run for a hideout? I don't know. He was always Roman like me. I... You said you'd written to him someplace. You must have had an address. Yeah, it was. Chair of General Delivery at Port O'Connor. There's an old bait house by the docks there. He lived in it whenever he had enough money to stop moving for a while. And he's got enough now. What he got when he robbed and murdered your wife. I'll arrange for your release as soon as we pick him up. Come on, Harrington. Open up and let us out, jailer. There's nobody inside, Chief. You can see through the window. He isn't here. You going to stake out and wait? Yes. Our car is out of sight where we left it. He won't spot it coming along the wharf. Well, that's a break. The door isn't locked. Fine. We can wait inside. Hey, this corp is the guy we're after, all right. Look, the same trademarks we found in that beach shack last night. Yes, Knife marked from the circle on the door. Running ball on the lamp card. Now what? Sit and wait. Hang it. Hang it, wake up. What? Somebody's coming along the wharf. Oh. Dark out. What, what time is it? Almost midnight. Steps are coming closer. You must be Corbett. Nothing to bring anybody else down here at this time of night. Heading this way, all right. Let him get all the way inside before we jump him. And remember, he's got a knife handy with it. I know. We won't need a lamp, Corbett. What? A knife, Chief! You fell My arm, you broke my arm. No, I just wrenched your shoulder. Oh. Keep you from throwing this for a while. Come on, come on, get up. Oh, oh. We could use that lamp now, Chief. Now, let it. Good thing you tackled him when you did. I felt that knife whizzing past my ear. Look, buried in the wall, a good inch. Whoa, what are you guys looking for here? What are you, a couple of crooks? Not that you don't know better than that. But just to make it official, I'm the district attorney, and we just dropped in to place you under arrest for the murder of Helen Watson and old Rosie up at Lobster Bay. You want your shoulder, friend? You want to cuff him, Chief? No, Harrington. I can see by the expression in Mr. Corbett's eyes that you've convinced him of the folly of resisting when he no longer holds a knife. Our car is about two blocks past the wharf, Mr. Corbett. May we offer you a lift into the city? This is 
is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Blood traces on the knife of Matt Corbett definitely linked him to the murder of Rosie McMichaels, the necklace woman. Confronted with proof of his guilt, he broke down and confessed to her murder and the murder of Mrs. Watson. He is now awaiting execution. Bud Watson was convicted on a charge of extortion but was placed on probation. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. (laughs) 